Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10-day trend. It has been a remarkably dry March so far. We are currently 58% of the way through the month, but the UK has only experienced 17% of its average rainfall. But regionally, many places have experienced significantly less than that. And at the moment, it stays dry for the next couple of days for the vast majority, but it is all about to change because of this area of low pressure currently bringing some very unsettled weather to Iberia. That's going to head our way. Now, ahead of that low on Thursday, we're going to see southerly winds bring actually quite widespread sunshine and warmth. Stark contrast to the cold weather heading into Greece, Cyprus and Turkey. So it could be said that on Thursday, the UK is one of the sunniest and indeed warmest parts of Europe with temperatures widely in the mid to high teens and in some spots 20 or 21 Celsius, the first time this year so far that we're likely to see 20 Celsius. But there will be some patchy cloud building, perhaps even the odd shower. The vast majority of the UK, though, dry and bright, and we keep the clear spells going into Thursday evening. The wind picks up, particularly towards the southwest, and the first signs of a change there for Cornwall as showery rain moves in by midnight and some heavy downpours by dawn, even some thunderstorms mostly offshore to the far southwest. With that wet weather arriving in the southwest and the breeze picking up, actually, most of England and Wales will be frost free first thing Friday. Just a touch of frost in some sheltered spots across central and northern Scotland. Otherwise, a less chilly start to Friday compared with recent mornings. A bit more cloud in the sky, certainly. And the thickest cloud will continue to be across the southwest with spells of rain moving through, perhaps easing off for a time in the morning before the rain pushes into parts of Northern Ireland, Wales, and eventually the south and southwest once again. But further north and east, well, it stays dry, it stays bright, and it stays mild, but it's going to be increasingly windy. So although we'll have temperatures again up to the high teens, it perhaps will feel a bit cooler, particularly around the east coast with that strengthening wind. The wind will continue to strengthen. Wind gusts over the higher parts of Scotland, 50 miles an hour or so. And we're likely to see gales uh, developing in the far northeast of Scotland overnight as this low starts to move in and the isobars tighten up. And it's this low that will be with us through the weekend. So having seen so much sunshine through the week, I'm afraid to say that we are more likely to see cloudier skies and outbreaks of rain into the weekend. It won't be a complete washout, although for Northern Ireland, that's the wettest place on Saturday. Some persistent and heavy rain expected here. Risk of 50 millimetres in places, that's going to make it feel disappointingly cool. But elsewhere, some warmth and some bright weather in the east of the UK, albeit more cloud in the sky compared with recent days, and certainly a lot of showers around, especially towards the west and the south, some more persistent rain, as I say, Northern Ireland, parts of western Scotland as well. Some heavy downpours, particularly for South Wales and the southwest, interspersed by some brighter spells. So all in all, turning much more unsettled on Saturday, and we continue in the same vein through Sunday. I think slightly different areas affected by the spells of rain. It looks likely that we'll see a lot of low cloud coming in from the North Sea to affect eastern parts, and some rain and drizzles and persistent damp weather. Eight degrees on the coast there, so much cooler compared with the next day or so. And towards the south, the winds could come together to provide a line of showers across southern counties of England, uh, perhaps even the old thunderstorm with some heavy downpours about. These, again, will be hit and miss, so some places could avoid them and stay dry. The driest weather, though, by Sunday will be across western Scotland and Northern Ireland, some brightness reappearing, although much cooler compared with the next couple of days, temperatures back to 9 or 10 Celsius. And that says a ridge of high pressure builds in. Now, by Monday, that ridge crosses the country and tends to sit to the south, with these areas of low pressure starting to head towards the north of the country. That's how we start off next week. But zooming out, you can see how weak and meandering the jet stream is, a typical occurrence at this time of year, of course, in the spring. The temperature contrast across the northern hemisphere isn't as large as in the autumn and winter, and that means the jet stream tends to be weaker and tends to twist a little bit more on its journey across the Northern Hemisphere. That makes it tricky to forecast weather patterns beyond five or six days because there are less solid aspects of the weather to grasp hold of. But there are some patterns emerging in the trend for next week, and they are illustrated in general terms by this chart. This shows the probability of various weather patterns going out to the next couple of weeks. Uh, the summary, basically, of 
more than 250 computer model simulations in which each of those simulations for each day is given a weather pattern that it represents. And I want to draw your attention to a few aspects of this. We'll go through it in the pieces over the next couple of minutes. But the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this increase in this shade of blue around the latter part of the weekend and early next week. And this shade of blue here represents northwesterly weather patterns. Now, what does that look like? It looks something like this with high pressure towards the south and southwest and northwest of the airflow, bringing showers with the greatest chance of rain or showers across the north and northwest of Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland, perhaps into some other northwestern parts of the UK. So that's where you're likely to see some more changeable weather, some showers or longer spells of rain, but drier elsewhere. And in fact, in terms of unsettled weather, it's looking fairly typical for the UK in March with average temperatures and showery rain at times, but nothing particularly impactful. Now, this is the most likely weather pattern for Tuesday, the 25th of March. This is the second most likely weather pattern, a similar percentage, in fact, and it shows more of a northerly airflow, so it would be cooler in this situation with the showers more likely across the northern two-thirds of the UK into the North Sea coast. But they're both similar weather patterns, basically, northwesterlies or northerlies, showery weather interspersed by bright spells. And with a bit more of a breeze compared with this week and a bit more cloud in the sky. I expect overnight temperatures won't be as low. We won't see those widespread frosts, although a touch of frost is likely in some shelter spots where we get cloud breaks. But conversely, by day, because we've got a cooler wind direction with northwesterlies or northerlies, daytime temperatures will be a little lower, around average or slightly below, depending on the precise wind direction. And this summarizes Thursday, the 27th of March, and the top three possible weather patterns. The most likely is that we'll have low pressure somewhere to the northwest of the UK. Average temperatures, that's what these colours are showing, the warmth further east across Europe. And again, showers or longer spells of rain, particularly towards the west and the northwest. There are two other patterns that are likely for Thursday as well. So they show a higher pressure ridging in from the southwest with a slightly milder air. But at the same time, there's another weather pattern that is coming through in the computer models, which is low pressure in the North Sea and more of a northerly flavour with low average temperatures. All in all, these are all relatively similar patterns with weak lows coming through in the model output, tending to be towards the north or the east of the UK, and generally showery weather, typical springtime weather patterns. And like I say, not quite as warm by day, but not as, quite as chilly and frosty by night. But it's at this stage that this probability chart gets a lot more complicated. There are a lot more colours getting involved at this stage. However, one thing that we can pick out is the emergence of these darker reds for the last few days of March and into April. And that represents higher pressure to the north. So after we see these weak northwesterlies, showery conditions through next week and average temperatures, the trend, and we can extend it through the next six weeks, the same chart, but for uh, six weeks of weather, uh, this shows first week of April, second week, third week, and fourth week. And what you can really see from this chart is that the dark reds become much more dominant into the start of April and throughout much of that month. Although, of course, at this time of year, it is very difficult to uh, uh, confidently say what the weather is going to be like beyond a week to 10 days. But that's one signal that's coming through, higher pressure, to the north. And that's certainly the case when you look at the model output from the European model. This is a summary of all the different simulations from the European model. And for the first week of April, it's got higher pressure to the west and northwest of the UK, lower pressure over the continent towards the southeast. So more of a northeasterly wind, but drier weather coming into the north, perhaps some unsettled weather into the south and southeast. The second week of April, Similar sort of thing, but with the high pressure trending more towards the north, low pressure towards the south. And in fact, for the Met Office output, it's a similar sort of theme. This is the first week of April, high pressure to the north. Second week of April, again, high pressure to the north, perhaps a little bit further north with lower pressure coming in, perhaps a bit more 
to the south. So yes, a lot of uncertainty through next week about how this transition will occur. We go from northwesterlies and showery weather with average temperatures at the start of next week towards more blocked weather patterns. And by blocked, I mean we're not likely to see a raging Atlantic jet stream bring low after low, etc but we're likely to see a slow moving area of high pressure and that high pressure is most likely to begin to sit towards the north of the UK. That's where the driest weather is likely to end up as we go into April with low pressure towards the south and the main uncertainty at that stage would be how much the high to the north will influence things across the whole of the country and how much the low to the south could bring some more unsettled weather into southern parts. So yes, at this time of year, the weather quite fickle and quite difficult to predict more than a week or so ahead. But that seems to be the general trend and we will keep you updated, of course, right here at the Met Office.